Yo squad, it's the Diet John Peel here. Hope everyone is well and staying safe out there. Hip-hop has always been a male-dominated space. Women in hip-hop have historically had to work twice as hard as their male counterparts. Black women have always been at the forefront of every musical genre. In the modern era and the old school, you've had many trailblazers such as Queen Latifah, Foxy Brown, Lil' Kim, Debrat, Lauren Hill and many others to name. The UK has had its share of talented ladies, ready to jump on the mic. Early rappers such as Moni Love, who rapped in an American accent, which was the style at the time. Which was the style at the time? If you want to find out more of the history on this subject, check out the video I did on why UK rappers rapped in American accents. Many girls in the UK used to look up to Lisa Mafia from the So Solid crew and used to rap her bars. More recently in the past decade, there's been some breakthrough apps such as Shah Simone, T Zandos, Miss Banks, and of course, Little Sims, and many others. I might actually do a breakdown of Little Sims' career if this video does well. Recently, you might have seen the clip of Lippy saying he rates Shabo more than Little Sims. I mean, this is coming from the guy that said Nines is better than Kendrick Lamar, but I gotta disagree with the Shabo comment, but you have to respect the man's opinion at the same time. Ability aside, today we're gonna look into the world of cosmetics and fashion. The Queen of the South, Shabo, is originally from Nigeria and is Ubra. Her music uses Nigerian dialect and Ubra to give herself a unique edge on hip hop. One of her main inspirations is global rap and fashion icon Nicki Minaj. Always one for coming from an authentic and genuine place. More than ready to embrace her Nigerian background over Britishness, she stated in 2020. Even taking the language as far as the Mobos. It's like there are so many Yoruba speaking communities all over the world and they will all talk to me because I'm relatable to them in that sense. In 2020, Hypebeast claimed that 2020 should have belonged to Shabo. With things slowing down in the music industry during the pandemic, she used the bad situation to refocus her energy. 10 years ago, she was rocking with a red weave and a bogey running down her nose. I feel like she focuses on, on the actual music over the actual hype. She's actually quite terrified of being famous, but she actually finds a way to focus her past anger and put that into the rhymes. After suffering from narcissistic abuse in her younger years, striving to shift the stereotypes of black women. She's always wanting the fans to see the positive side of her. I'm looking at every single detail, my music, my branding, my signatures, everything. At the same time, she's reconsidering her image. In person, she is softly spoken, faultlessly polite and makes for witty and relaxed company. Her public persona though has been more confrontational up until this point. Both in the barbs she includes on her tracks. Duck the talking thing. I've tried it before. I don't want no blood on my Christian Dior. And on her Twitter, which is peppered with allusions to conflicts and public venting of aspiration. Her aura is stush bougie, or giving bougie, <laughs> as she describes it. I'm actually quite stiff. I don't dance. Oh. Like I said, I'm like bougie stush. Like I just sit there literally like... The record, you done know, there's endless bars about clothing and fashion woven into the lyrics. Flying out to Canada in Canada Goose. I'm a big old freak like Megan Thee Stallion. Hair from China, shoes Italian. I don't wear long nails because it hurts when I'm slapping a batch. Mixing an outside element like fashion and then relating it back to the music is always a win-win in my eyes and it's a really good way of doing sort of marketing your music because buying views and buying ads isn't actually music marketing just saying it's there's clever ways that you can promote your music i think a really good example of this is for people listening is beer and the track she did with j cole london like bringing an outside element like technology or food or fashion and relating that back to the music is a really good way of promoting your music just to let you guys know and i think it's always really impressive when it's done well and it's done tastefully because buying views and ads isn't music marketing shabo is always rocking the iconic queen of the south chain one of her first singles was bonjour savar with miss familia i think i pronounced that right i can never get that pronunciation correct but it was on anger where she made her presence felt 
In the video alone, there are multiple outfit changes. And it added flame flower just for a nice touch. I reckon she definitely drinks Carlin. What are you guys saying? Is Shabo a Carlin girl? All jokes aside, she had great energy and serious swag. And she even has her own Crocs. Like, what other artist has done that? Like, Crocs are popping now. Like, remember I used to wear Crocs and used to get bullied, but Shabo's making it cool. And she's got her own Crocs. She constantly oozes confidence and drip in her videos. Every era has been defined with a different style or outfit, constantly keeping it relevant to the Instagram aesthetic. Whether that is a hairstyle change, a change of outfit, or a total reinvention. The stylist team, whoever's doing all this, needs bigging up. Double A is one of my favourite videos from her. She pays homage to her Nigerian roots, but with an essence of street and hood flavour to it, but also keeping it classy at the same time. Even getting her hair done during the sequence. Yet again, she creates a different versions of herself in one video. Stunting old, traditional Nigerian outfits with a new custom edge. Wearing casual tracksuits and then making them look designer. Making reference to her past, combining fashion intertwined. Her presence on Instagram is actually unmatched using clever and creative eye-catching colour schemes. In terms of her branding, her management understands the power of it, using the feeling and emotions of colours, using different hairstyles and outfits to engage with the audience, giving it an attractive glare, but also keeping it pristine. All these elements combined makes a unique force to be reckoned with, taking other elements of other artists such as Foxy Brown and Little Kim with hair and cosmetics and the old school flair reminiscent of Debrat, seasoning this all with a hint of Nicki Minaj, adding her own swag with a contemporary feel. She's even worked with domestic abuse survivors and Grenfell victims. What an incredible lady. She has also stood up for women in court who has suffered domestic abuse and helped Grenfell children victims with PTSD after doing social studies at uni. So big up everyone that's stuck through this video. It was a really fun one to do this one. Like I just loved researching the sort of cosmetic side, kind of taking it away from the music, but bringing it back in. And just let me know your guys' thoughts on this. Do you think that Shabo is the UK cosmetic queen? Or do you think that title belongs to someone else? So just want to be clear, I don't think she's the best rapper in the UK. She's very talented. She's very good at what she does. I might start doing some more videos on like rating artists out of 10, maybe doing the top 10 rappers in the UK. Something along the lines of that. This was just more of looking into the sort of the fashion world. And fashion is something that I want to look into more. So if you're a fashion expert, if you're a stylist, hit me up and we'll we'll look we'll, we'll do some work together because it's something that I'm very fascinated in. But if you've enjoyed this video guys, I'd really appreciate a subscribe. And you can check out some more videos that are going to come on the screen now. This is some of my work. It'll keep you entertained. And this is the Diet John Peel signing out. Have a good one.